This is module 29, and the first topic is finding the zeros of a quadratic function given its equation. So, in order for us to find the zeros, that's the same thing as finding the x-intercepts. And how do you find your x-intercepts? You get them by taking your y value and equaling it to zero. And so then, if this can be factored, you'd want to do it that way because the fastest way to do it if it cannot be factored or you're having much trouble factoring it then you can always choose to use the quadratic formula however in this case it is pretty easy um, to factor this quadratic so then you set quadratic or each factor I'm sorry equal to zero and you get your two solutions two and five which means your zeros r2 comma 5. Um, for the next function it really doesn't matter what the function looks like again you're still setting your y value equal to 0 and if you can factor this relatively easily um, then you would want to go ahead and do that and then set each factor equal to 0 again and then solve for x and then you get negative 4 and 3 as your zeros for this particular problem. Now the next topic <clears throat> excuse me, is identifying polynomial functions. So a function is a polynomial as long as the exponent of x is a whole number. So in order for it to be a whole number, um, that means it cannot be negative and it cannot be a fraction. Okay, so if you look at this, here you have an exponent of 1, here you have an exponent of 3. Both of those are positive whole numbers, so this is a polynomial function. Whereas here, you can actually write this as an exponent 1 half, but that's a fraction exponent, and those are not considered polynomials. You could write this as 5x to the 0, um, but 0 is actually considered a polynomial. Actually, it's not. It's not considered a polynomial. It's considered a constant function. So you have to be careful with that one. Um, and then the next one, if you look at this here, you actually, let me backtrack to that one. I believe as long as you have constants, those are still considered polynomials. Think of the polynomial x squared plus 5x plus 2. That is a polynomial and it does have a constant in it. So I should change my definition here. It's a whole number um, or 0. Okay. So here you do have 0. And therefore, this should be a yes. Same thing here. This can be written as 5x to the 4th plus 1 third times x to the 3rd minus 9. Again, you can add the x to the 0 here. But the powers are what you're looking at. And those are whole numbers. And then, of course, you do have the 0. So this is a polynomial function. <clears throat> The next topic is finding zeros of a polynomial function in factored form. So this one's just like the previous one. If you're finding the zeros, all you're doing is taking your y value and setting it equal to zero. And what's nice about this problem is they've already factored everything for me, so I just have to set each factor equal to zero. So I have this factor equal to zero, the middle factor equal to zero, and the right-sided factor equal to zero. Here I get x equals 0, here I get plus or minus 2, and here I get 3. So you actually have four zeros here. You have 0, positive 2, negative 2, and 3. Don't forget that when you take the square root of a number, you automatically get plus or minus the square root of that number. So we had four solutions for this problem. Now let's look at another topic. 
This one says finding zeros and their multiplicities given the polynomial function written in factored form. Okay, so we need to know a couple of bits of information. Okay, the first thing is, is that if you have a factor written like this, C is a zero. Therefore, you have to take the opposite sign from what's inside the parentheses to figure out what the actual zero is. The second thing is, is that your power up there is the multiplicity. And so for each zero, it's going to have its own multiplicity. So here, for instance, I have plus eight, which means the zero that corresponds is negative eight with multiplicity of this exponent, which is two. Here you have a positive seven, so the zero is negative seven with multiplicity of, and there's no exponent there, it's automatically one. And then finally, the last one we have here, that's a minus five, so we're gonna use positive five as our zero with multiplicity of this exponent, which is three. So these are the zeros and the exponents on that factor is the multiplicity. Okay, so now here on the next topic it says find x and y intercepts given the polynomial function. So if I want to find the, x, the y intercept, that's easy, you just plug in x for zero, right? So I get negative zero cubed minus three times zero squared plus 54 times zero. Well, what would I end up with? I end up with zero minus zero plus zero, which is just zero. So the y-intercept is going to be zero comma zero. Then now for the x-intercept, this is where you make the y value zero and you figure out what the x values are. First thing I need to do is, is factor this function. Now because the first function, the first factor is negative, if I factor out the negative from the front and all of these terms have an x in common, I get x squared plus 3x plus 54. Then if I try to factor that polynomial, I have x and x, and actually this would become a negative, right? That will make that negative, that will make the middle term negative, and negative and negative will make this term a positive. So let's see, I think it's 9 times 6, that's 54, yes. So positive 9, negative 6, and then if I set each factor equal to 0, I get x equal to 0, I get x equal to negative 9, and I get x equal to 6. And so my x-intercepts for this particular polynomial are 0, 0, which is the same as the y-intercept, negative 9, 0, and 6, 0. Now, depending on if they want them in point form or if they just want you to list the values, that depends on Alex. Sometimes they just want the y-intercept equals 0. And here they would want the x-intercept equals 0, negative 9, 6, and that sort of thing. Okay? Let's check out the other problem. So here we would do the y-intercept first, so we're going to plug in 0 for x. And when I plug in 0 for x, I end up with y equal to 6. So the y-intercept is 0 comma 6, or just the number 6. Then for the x-intercepts, we're going to plug in 0 for the y-value and try to calculate this x-value. Since we have four terms here, we're gonna do it factor by grouping. So we get x minus three, factor out a negative two, you get x minus three, x minus three times x squared minus two. And so if we set each factor equal to zero, we get x equals to three, and then x equals plus or minus square root of two. So we have three x-intercepts here 3 comma 0, square root of 2 comma 0, and negative square root of 2 comma 0.